Today on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we're covering the mysterious deaths of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Small, starting with Tupac. Right now, we're on our way to Las Vegas and eventually Los Angeles to cover some of the spots where this all went down. As always, I'm Ryan, that's Brent, and we brought along our friend Daisha because it felt wrong to cover Biggie and Tupac without bringing a true super fan. I'm more of a Tupac fan, but you know, Biggie, Biggie's cool. Irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you're irrelevant. Anyways, let's get into it. <laughs> On September 7th, 1996, at the MGM Grand Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, Tupac Shakur attended a Mike Tyson boxing match. After the match, Tupac left with Suge Knight, who at the time was CEO of the West Coast record label, Death Row Records, the label that Tupac was signed to. However, on their way out, Tupac and his bodyguards got into a fight with Orlando Anderson in the lobby of the MGM Casino. In the lobby? In the lobby of the MGM. Orlando Anderson was a member of the Compton-based Southside Crips gang. After the brawl, Suge Knight and Tupac left in Knight's car with Tupac's entourage following in cars behind them. While stopped at the traffic light at the intersection of Flamingo and Koval, a white Cadillac pulled up on the passenger side of Knight's car and shot out of the window, hitting Tupac four times and grazing Knight in the head with the bullet fragment. In 2014, 18 years after the shooting, Chris Carroll, a now retired Las Vegas Police Department sergeant, came forward to say he was first at the scene. Why was he quiet for 18 years? If I was a cop, I wouldn't necessarily say in a public way that I was the first person. All right. Own Daisha. Shut up. According to Carroll, when he opened the car door, Tupac fell out of the car covered in blood, and Carroll asked, quote, who shot you? And states that Tupac took a breath to respond and said, quote, fuck you before slipping into unconsciousness, making those Tupac's last words. Since we're like right here, there's like no way. What time is it right now? 11.56. Look how many cars right now at 11.56. On a Friday, that's not nearly as busy as a Tyson fight. There's no way, like if I heard those gunshots, it would just be like. <laughs> you look where it was, right? Yeah. Tupac was taken to the University Medical Center and placed on life support in a medically induced coma. And on September 13th, 1996, six days after the shooting, Tupac died due to his injuries at the age of 25. Whoa, 25? I didn't realize he died so young. Both of them died yeah, super young. Yeah, he died young. at 25, Biggie Smalls died at 24. I think that's what was so heartbreaking about it, is that there were these two young black males on the rise and like they just got snatched up. Yeah, that's where it happened. That's where he died. One strange fact is that the Las Vegas police never arrested anyone in connection with the murder. They also failed to follow up with Yaki Gaddafi, a member of Tupac's entourage who was there that evening who claimed he could identify the assailant. However, Gaddafi was unfortunately murdered two months later on November 10th, 1996 before he could be interviewed. Wow. A Las Vegas homicide detective who oversaw the case claimed it got, quote, the same treatment as any other homicide here, end quote. What does that mean? <laughs> we don't care about anyone who died. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care if he was was famous, we treat everyone the same. <laughs> All right, let's get to some of the main theories. All right. The first theory is from former LA Times journalist, Chuck Phillips, who believes that Orlando Anderson, the Crips gang, and none other than Biggie Smalls are responsible for the murder. Chuck Phillips and the LA Times investigated the murder over the course of a year and came up with the following conclusions based on anonymous sources. Conclusion one, members of the Southside Crips were involved in the shooting as retaliation for Tupac's beating of Orlando Anderson. Conclusion two, Orlando Anderson was the shooter. Conclusion three, Biggie Smalls paid $1 million for the murder of Tupac and supplied the gun. No, how would anyone know that? Well, he did- Also, didn't... why would you supply the gun? <laughs> Because he wanted it done with his gun, reportedly. Why? That's because how that's how things go down, I guess. I don't know. Speaking of Biggie, let's go over his potential motive for wanting Tupac dead. Biggie's year-long feud with Tupac was well known and at the forefront of the East Coast West Coast rap rivalry, including a reported verbal altercation and diss tracks. In one track titled Hit 'Em Up, Tupac claimed he had slept with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans. How does that one go? Is that Hit 'Em Up, Hit 'Em Up? Or is that a different one? <laughs> I'm actually curious. I think you should just never do that again. <laughs> no, no, no. I Strangely, according to Phillips, neither Biggie nor anyone connected to Biggie was questioned by the police. Wow, okay. As for Orlando Anderson, the believed shooter, he was shot to death in May 1998. Up until his death, Anderson denied responsibility for Tupac's death and was never charged. The second theory is from former LAPD detective Russell Poole, who believes that Suge Knight set up the murder. Despite Suge Knight also being hit in the shooting, Detective Poole believes Suge Knight had motives. Motive one, Suge Knight apparently owed Tupac a lot of money, 
by some accounts $3 million, a theory corroborated by the fact that Afini Shakur, Tupac's mother, sued Death Row and Knight in 1997 for mishandling funds and taking millions of dollars away from Tupac. Motive 2. Tupac intended to leave Death Row Records, Suge Knight's label. Tupac had recently fired his lawyer, David Kenner, who in addition to being Suge Knight's lawyer, also wrote up Tupac's agreement with Death Row Records. And sure enough, a week after the firing, Suge Knight invited Tupac to the fateful boxing match. Here's some other things that don't look good for Suge Knight. Shortly after the brawl in the MGM lobby, Knight stopped to make a phone call while everyone else was fleeing the scene. Knight also insisted that Tupac ride with him in his car after the boxing match. Was it on Tupac's side that they shot at the car, or was it on Suge Knight's side? The side of the car that Tupac was on. So how'd they know that they got Tupac's side? Oh, I see what you're saying. So how would they know which side Tupac was on? Yeah. Unless somebody told him. Right. Orlando Anderson, the man who Tupac fought with at MGM, also contradicted his initial testimony, at first saying Knight was part of the MGM brawl, but then later saying that Knight was trying to break up the fight, stating, quote, I seen him pulling people off of me, end quote. Many people believe this turnaround happened because of a payoff by Knight. Detective Poole also claims the bullet wound Knight says he received that night was never verified by the hospital, the police, or any other witnesses. So nobody knows if he got shot. Exactly. Whoa! However, how, did, how did that get through? However, however, this contradicts the 2014 report from former Las Vegas Police Sergeant Chris Carroll, who stated that Knight's head was, quote, gushing blood, and that he had, quote, clearly been hit in the head. Carol also mentioned that Knight showed legitimate concern and that, quote, it wasn't acting. Why would he be like, it's not acting? That sounds like something <laughs> that someone would pay you to say, like. You don't trust that Chris Carroll was a, a licensed casting director and wouldn't <laughs> notice bad acting from good acting? Well, he said that later, though, so he must have heard the rumors that people thought it was Shug. That could be also why he said this, quote, this is not the guy who had him killed. It's ridiculous. To me, yeah, this makes way more sense than Biggie. So this guy would only benefit from Tupac dying because then he's going to be able to get more money because then obviously his music will become immortalized now. And he'll still own everything. Right. Here's my thing about it. I just, I can't see someone putting themselves in the line of fire yeah. in a murder scenario. I just don't, that True. doesn't make no. sense to me. Yeah. The third theory is from LAPD detective Greg Kading, who believes that Sean Combs, AKA P Diddy or Puff Daddy, and CEO of the East Coast record label Bad Boy Records orchestrated Tupac's death. Detective Kading got a Crips gang member named Keith Davis to confess on tape that P Diddy paid him $1 million to carry out the murder of Tupac and Shook Knight. Keith Davis confessed that Orlando Anderson, who was Davis's nephew, was the one who pulled the trigger. And Davis also admits to being in the car when he recounts the night that Tupac was shot. Quote, Orlando rolled down the window and popped him. If they would have drove on my side, I would have popped them. End quote. Keith Davis claims the motive behind P. Diddy's hit was due to fear that Suge Knight would strike first, and that Tupac was only included in the hit because P. Diddy was pissed off about Tupac's song Hit Him Up. Furthermore, before Tupac was killed, he was shot multiple times on November 30th, 1994 at Quad Recording Studios in New York City. Tupac repeatedly stated that he suspected people associated with P. Diddy were the perpetrators, a suspicion corroborated by a 2011 confession from Dexter Isaac, who claimed he was hired by a P. Diddy associate to rob Tupac that night. However, P. Diddy has denied involvement in the murder, stating, quote, this story is pure fiction and completely ridiculous, end quote. And for what it's worth, Keith Davis was reportedly looking at 25 years to life due to unrelated activities if he didn't reveal his secrets. If you're saying that someone paid you a million dollars, like, wouldn't you, wouldn't there be some kind of receipt to say that? You don't want a paper trail. Would Why there... would you establish a paper trail? Okay, all right. Overruled. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> the next theory is that the Jewish Defense League... What? <laughs> <laughs> Let him finish. <laughs> Let him finish. <laughs> okay. oh, there are cops coming out. Oh shit! Really? The next theory is that the Jewish Defense League, an extremist pro-Israel group, killed Tupac. The FBI had files of alleged death threats on Tupac from the Jewish Defense League, which has been classified as a terrorist group by the FBI. Other than that, there's really not much to see here. I mean, they did offer threats. They did offer they're threats. The only one, they're the only people who said, I'm gonna kill you. You know what? You have a point. The last theory I'm gonna go over is pretty silly. Aliens. <laughs> Finally, I believe you. Yes, of course, together, working at last. 
<laughs> some believe that Tupac is in fact still alive and faked his own death. In 2015, some news outlets reported that a man named David Myers claimed he helped Tupac fake his death and that Suge Knight, among others, helped as well. However, this story seems to have originated from a fake news site, so take it with an enormous grain of salt. Some believe Tupac is alive and well in Cuba. I like, I want to believe that's the truth yeah. because I think it means so much more for like, Humanity. The, yes, exactly. Yeah. Everything would be better in the world if that were true. Yes. Yeah. It seems clear to me why it's unsolved. There's a lot of holes. There's a lot of eyewitness and a lot of people who aren't talking. Who would have enough power to get all of these people to not say anything? Who killed Tupac? That'll do it for today. We're going to stay the night in Vegas and we'll pick it back up tomorrow when we're going to drive to Los Angeles and discuss the death of Biggie Smalls. So, see you then. Cheers. I've lost $14. One three bucks! Fuck.